In this video, we're going to be talking about low oil pressure, what causes it, and how to troubleshoot your oil system. Yuck. We are going to be talking about oil pressure issues in this video. And I get a lot of questions regarding this common complaint. And I usually tell people the exact same thing. And I go in an order of operation of how to troubleshoot your oil pressure system, what are the likely causes. Um, and it's going to start off pretty basic and then work its way up to uh, kind of more complicated. Um, before I get started, I'd like to thank Shalva for sending me $50 on PayPal. If you would like to help support the making of these videos, you can support the channel through PayPal at Adept Ape at yahoo.com all right thank you i hope you enjoy the video all right so first things first if you're getting low oil pressure you need to check your oil level now this is kind of basic but checking your oil and the oil level can give you a lot of clues as to what's going on so this engine here diesel engine in a c7 uh, as you can see the oil's almost clear and it's overfilled now the reason that is is because it has fuel dilution now fuel is a lot thinner than oil so that can cause low oil pressure now in that clip you could see that we had really thinned out oil due to fuel dilution now i have a video on fuel dilution if your oil looks like that in a diesel engine it's clear or it's higher than it should be they call that making oil and that's normally called caused by fuel dilution uh, if you do have that problem check out my video on fuel dilution that'll go through the proper troubleshooting for that and that should take care of your oil pressure issues now what else can get in the oil well you can get coolant in your oil coolant can also give you oil faults low oil pressure because coolant is basically water viscosity which is very thin it can also turn your oil into almost a mayonnaise and if you're getting it in your oil your oil level will be high You'll typically have rust on your dipstick, and the color of the oil will typically turn kind of a grayish color. And if this is occurring, you need to get it fixed as soon as possible because it can result in bearing damage. Now, let's say your oil level is correct. You have cleanish oil. What can be some other causes? So the next thing you're going to want to do, if your oil level is fine, is put a mechanical gauge on your oil system. Now this is a C15 Caterpillar. Behind your fuel filter, you'll find two sensors. The one to the rear of the engine, as you can see highlighted, that is where your oil pressure sensor goes. Now before you start removing engine components from your engine, you want to put that gauge on that system. And the reason for it is, you might just have a bad sensor and your oil pressure might be fine. Now, the way I troubleshoot it, as you can kind of tell, is I go by easiest to hardest. So checking your oil level and the condition of it is the easiest part. Now we move on to putting a gauge on it. Now typically you're gonna want to put the gauge on in addition with the sensor to verify how close they are to each other. So if that cat c15 there there's a small plug next to the oil pressure sensor you can use that as a port to test your pressure now if you have a c7 or a c9 or a c13 or whatever engine you're working on most of them are going to have an oil manifold and your oil pressure sensor are going to be on the driver's side or the left side of the engine below the intake manifold on the block and that's where you're going to test your oil pressure now let's say your pressure sensor and your gauge are correct okay so this means you actually have something wrong with your oil pressure and you're going to need to do further troubleshooting. So I'm going to go through now what you need to troubleshoot next, what are the likely causes, and how far into this engine you might have to get. All right, so you have good clean oil. You have checked your oil pressure. Next thing you're going to want to do is change your oil and change your oil filter. And the reason for that is, depending on the mileage and condition of your engine, you might have started to carbon load your oil filter, which basically means accumulation of burnt oil and blow-by have started to 
fill the oil filter element with carbon. Now, if your blow-by tube looks like this as it's idling, and you're dumping blow-by out like crazy, you're probably getting this condition. And what's happening is all that blow-by gas is going into the crankcase, and what it's doing is you're, it's plugging that oil filter. If you find that after changing your oil filter that fixes your oil pressure issue, you most likely have a high blow-by condition, and usually that has to be rectified with an engine rebuild. Okay, so you've basically taken care of all of the simple things that can be causing your low oil pressure condition. You've checked your oil level, the condition of the oil, you have tested that the oil pressure sensor is working properly, both of those have taken place, you've changed the oil and filter, and you're still getting low oil pressure. So what other things, other than tearing down this engine, can we think about? Well, on most CAT oil systems, on your oil filter base, there are two valves that can affect your oil pressure. One of those is the oil filter bypass. Now, this valve can be changed, and typically its role is to, say your filter is very plugged, it will typically bypass that filter and send unfiltered oil into your oil galleys. And the reasoning behind that is it's better to have dirty oil than no oil at all. Now the other valve is a oil pressure relief valve. And this is for typically, let's say it's a really cold morning, you fire up the truck, the viscosity of the oil is going to be very high. And this valve is there to vent some of the oil pressure so as not to send too much oil pressure into your bearings and your filter as such. Now if those stick open, that can cause a condition and not so much the bypass valve because if the if it just bypasses the filter you're still going to have decent oil pressure but mostly your oil pressure valve if that one sticks open that can vent some of your oil pressure and that can cause that condition those are fairly easy to change you don't typically have to remove too many components to get to them and those are usually in your oil filter base so Let's say you go through, you change that valve or both valves, and you still have the condition. Well, now we're looking at major engine components. And typically that is going to be bearing damage and or an oil pump that has failed or just worn. So uh, what we need to look at is how do you tell if it's your oil pump? How do you tell if your bearings are damaged? Um, well, one thing is if you cut your oil filter open. If you cut your oil filter open and it's full of metal, then you most likely have bearing damage. And anyone that's never seen a bearing before, I'll show you a video of one coming off a rod. But this is what a bearing looks like. It's not like a ball bearing or a needle bearing. It's simply a piece of metal that gets inserted between either the rod or the block and the crankshaft and it has a small oil film that runs along it. Now over time these are going to get wear across the bearing, they'll get scratches and as they wear you get a larger gap between this and your crankshaft or your camshaft. Your camshaft also has bearings. Now what, can, what that can cause is lower oil pressure and worn bearings, especially from lack of oil changes is a really big cause for concern when it comes to low oil pressure. And there's nothing going to fix that until you address the bearing issue with new bearings, which typically comes with a rebuild. Now, how can you tell if it's the oil pump itself? Well, unfortunately, if that pump's producing lower than normal flow, you won't know unless you change the pump itself. Now, you can disassemble the pump, look at the gears, um, but at that point, you typically have the oil pan already off, and it's best to just change the pump if you suspect it's the pump. Now, before you start removing the oil pan and main bearings, rod bearings, oil pump, do you have any other issues that potentially could be causing this? I mean, do you have an engine miss? Do you have potentially something wrong with your jake brakes or exhaust brakes? Your overhead is also supplied with engine oil. Now, if your jakes aren't working, that might be a potential cause of slightly lower oil pressure because the oil gets pumped up to the jakes to help them operate. Well, see if you have an engine miss, 
you might have something wrong with the oiling system going to your rocker arm, something like that. So, you know, just remember that oil affects everything on the engine. So if you have another issue, it might have something to do with your low oil pressure condition. Kind of like the blow I was talking about before. Now, if everything seems to be nor operating normally and you're going to be getting into bearings and stuff. Now, is it possible that you have good bearings, you have a good oil pump, but you're still getting low oil pressure. Yes, it's possible. Um, you know, you could have a small crack in an oil galley that's dumping internally, which could only be fixed by changing the block. Um, you could have a spun, say a cam bearing, which would be hard to find without removing the camshaft, which is a lot of work. Um, you could have a spun main bearing, a spun rod bearing, these. If that's the case, typically we'll have to be replaced with a new engine, or at least the engine being removed and the block machined. Now remember also you have piston cooling jets if you have a diesel engine, and these piston cooling jets can leak as well. Um, now typically if you lose a piston cooling jet, you'll lose a cylinder because that cooling jet helps keep the engine cooler. But it's possible that there's a small crack in the piston cooling jet galley. And if while you have the pan off, if you're checking your bearings, be sure to inspect your cooling jets. Maybe they have a crack in them. Maybe the galley has a crack in it. If this is the case, it might be getting lower than normal oil pressure. All right, so let me show you a picture and let's discuss the oil pump and what to look for in your bearings. So if you're unfamiliar of what an oil pump setup looks like, this is the sump pickup, as you can see where it says sump, which that can become clogged and possibly cause a low oil condition. And then down by the front of the crankshaft, you're gonna have the pump itself, which that can also be a cause of low oil pressure. Now, if you remove a bearing, this is what it looks like. This is a good looking bearing. You don't have deep gouges or scratches really. You've got a nice uniform coating of oil. This is a rod bearing. If your, all your bangs look like this, they are most likely good. Okay, so we've basically discussed about 99% of the typical causes of a low oil pressure condition. Now, what's that other 1%? Well, it's something weird that is not common, and it's going to take probably a lot of troubleshooting to find. But I've tried to address mostly the basic things that most people are going to look for themselves and most of the things that I've found or people have asked me questions about. Now, some people, they're in their cab all day and they notice that, hey, you know, a year ago my truck engine at idle had 40 PSI of oil pressure and now it's at 35 PSI of oil pressure, you know, and they'll bring it in to get trouble shot. And the thing to remember is that CAT has guidelines for low oil pressure conditions. And if your oil pressure is only gone down slightly, don't worry about it. As long as it's not losing pressure or getting real low around like say 10 PSI, you know, your engine's well protected at, you know, 30, 35, 40 PSI at idle. So, you know, don't cost yourself thousands of dollars if you see that it's only dropped a little bit you know, it might just be normal wear on your bearings or a slightly worn pump. You know, save your money for when your engine needs really repaired. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section. Thank you. Hey, if you guys are still watching the video, I took this picture today at work and thought I'd include it in the video because I found it kind of cool. Customer came in with a uh, coolant in their oil and said, you know, they had the truck towed in so I pulled the head after I found coolant leaking out of the number six cylinder and I found the valve embedded in the piston which destroyed the cylinder. Thought you'd enjoy it. Thanks for watching.